Hello, welcome to you, Data with Zach. Today we're going to be talking about consecutive streaks. How do you find them in data? Whether that be a win streak or maybe a user activity streak, the number of days in a row a user's been active. There's all these different use cases for finding consecutive streaks that could be business insights. So I think that the most simple way to do this would be with Python, right? Where you sort the data and then you loop over it and then count the number of times that it doesn't change. And then when it changes, you reset the counter to zero and then that will kind of give you your answer. I like that, but sometimes that might be more complicated than necessary because SQL is really elegant because it can just solve this problem with a query and then you don't have to move data from like a database to a script back to a database or whatever you're going to do with your Python script. How, solving it with just a query is, can, can be really nice. So today we're going to solve this consecutive streak problem on a data set that I created in 2015, 2016 around the game Halo 5. So every row in this data set is a player's performance in a match. So it will be like a player, the match, if they won or not, and then how many kills they got and how many deaths they got. We're gonna be using those uh, main uh, characteristics to determine streaks and Hopefully, we'll also be able to do, find outliers here. Like, for example, if someone wins 200 or 300 times in a row, that's probably ske sketchy, right? They, they, they're, they're probably doing something that's not legit. They have an unfair advantage. They're probably cheating, you know, statistically speaking. Maybe they're really good, but who knows, right? So for today's lesson, make sure that you have a local Postgres installed and you have that all ready to go. You can follow the instructions to get Postgres set up in the GitHub in the link in the comments. Yeah, here we go, let's get going. Hello, welcome. So today we're going to be starting with the table match details. So let's just get some columns in this real quick. So one of the columns we're gonna be working with is player gamer tag. Think of that as like the identifier for the player. There's also a did win, whether or not they won that match. We also wanna get a player total kills and player total deaths, right? And so if we, uh, well, we also need to get match ID, right? Match ID. So if we run this, you'll see we have player gamer tag, whether or not they won, how many kills they got, how many deaths they go out, and then the match ID. So we're gonna be using this. We need to get a couple more columns from a couple tables real quick so that we can get our starter CTE. And then we will be off to the races here. So we want to also get the match timestamp. So we're gonna need to alias this and say join matches m on md.matchid equals m.matchid. That will give us the matches. And if you are wanting to do this with me, uh, you can go to the GitHub in the comments and you can follow along. You'll see I'm on a local Postgres instance. It's very easy to set this up so that you can do this hands-on. I highly recommend that because SQL is a very hands-on language. Watching me do this will only get you so far. So now with this, we, we need to put MD here, but then we can say m.completion date, right? And let's run this code real quick. That should give us, oh yeah, here we go. You'll see now we have player gamer tag and then we have the completion date. Awesome. So the next thing we need to get is the playlist, right? Because there's competitive playlists and then there's casual playlists. If someone wins a lot in a casual playlist, I'm not that worried about it, right? I'm mainly looking at competitive playlists. Someone should not be winning hundreds and hundreds of times in a row in a competitive playlist. So the way we do that is we just join playlists PL on m.playlistID equals PL.playlistID. And I'm gonna make a new column here, PL.name as playlist. So let's run this code. Okay, you'll see now we have this playlist, right? So you see SWAT and Team Arena and Breakout. These are all different playlists that you can play in Halo. All of these are ranked competitive playlists. So if someone got a lot of wins in a row in SWAT or Team Arena or Breakout, that would be kind of suspicious. Uh, so we need to use our window functions and partition on this column as well. So I think the columns that we will be partitioning on here are playlist and player gamer tag, that will give us the right split so we can look at individual users and how they win. And then we will order on completion date so we can see consecutive streaks here. Awesome, so we're gonna call this our starter CTE. we we'll are call this with starter as, because we're gonna be using this later on. Now we want to 
figure out like did they uh was the last game the same as this one like did they win here or did they lose here right like or the game before and that's how we can know if a new streak is starting or not right so i'm going to make a new cte here called lagged because we're going to be using a window function here so we're going to say select star from starter here and now what we want to do is we want to do lag did win one so this is saying Look at the did win column one record before, but now we need to specify the window. So we're going to say over, partition by, and then the window here is player gamer tag, playlist. And then we want to order by, completion date. And this is as um, did win game before. And then we also want to just select star and get the rest of the columns. So this will give us our our kind of our flipped and our lagged thing right so let's go ahead and say select star from lagged just so we can kind of see like what this data looks like so you'll see we have did win here and then we have did win game before so this could be null if it's the very first game they've played right because then we don't know what the game before is so this could be null to start with right and that's totally fine so now what we want to do is we want to see when these change, right? So we want to we want to compare if did win and did win the game before. If they are both one, then that's the start, or or that's a continuation of a win streak. If the game, if this game did win is zero and the previous one is one, that's the end of a streak, right? So we mainly want to look at when these things change, and that will be when the start and stop of a streak is. Right, so what we're going to say here is we're going to say um, case when did win equals did win game before, then one, else zero, end, and we're going to call this as streak identifier. Or we're going to call this um, streak changed. We're going to call this streak changed, actually. That's a better name for it. So let's go ahead and do a select star here and then run. Oh, and then I'm going to put also, I'm going to put did win. I'm going to just select did win twice here so we can kind of see if that's what's going on okay so now we see we have okay we have did win game before did win see how these are interesting what these should not be different okay so if it's did win game before and did win are they are equal oh no this is not equal that's why uh, flip this needs to be when they are different when like the game before and this game are different that means it's the beginning of a new streak right and some uh, uh, a change has occurred so if we run this you'll see okay a one and a zero perfect right and so this gives us okay this is uh the beginning of a new streak and then we have all of the times when a streak changed awesome so now all we need to do is sum all of these ones up and then and that will give us what we want for what's called a streak identifier. And then we can end up using that to use in group buys and other window functions to then determine what the actual min and max streak is. So I'm going to call this um, streak change as... We're going to be using a lot of CTEs here. Let me put that M here. Uh, so then we're going to have streak identified... So in this case, we're going to, I'm just going to select star from streak change. And then what we want to do here is we're going to say sum streak changed over, and we want to say partition by the same thing, player gamer tag and playlist, and order by completion date. We want to do the same window here. And this will be as streak identifier. I think this will make sense here in just a second. So we're going to say select star from streak identified. Awesome. So you'll see here how now we have a streak identifier. So this will, if we put all these together, right? So this is, so for a perky pug, this is his 13th streak, right? And so that is uh, an interesting thing to learn right and but streaks here can be streak of one so if you just do win loss win loss it's still gonna just alternate really quickly but that's fine so now what we want to do is we want to figure out what the most wins are here right so what we need to do is do a different window function now right where we 
partition on streak identifier as well. So we partition on player, playlist, and streak identifier and count the number of records. So in this case, we're going to call this um, record counts. In this case, we're going to select here, and then we're going to say select row number, and then we're going to say over partition by same thing here. All of this is the same, except now we also put in a streak identifier so that we can see the number of records here. Row count over partition by streak identifier completion date. Oh, we need a comma there. That's why. This is as streak length. All right, and then let's say select star from record counts. This should give us some interesting data here to see. So you'll see now we have streak length here. There's going to be a lot of ones, right? And there's also, so this guy says he has gotten a streak of 13 before. This is like, but like this is only, this only does the top 500. So what we actually need to do is we need to say order by streak length descending so that we get the, the, the actual top 500 here. Okay, so here's Glorylicious. It looks like he won 182 times in a row, right, in SWAT. So, but you see how this is like all of his streak, right? It's, all, it's just Glorylicious over and over and over again because it's all of his games over and over and over again in a row, right? And so what we want to do here is we really only want to pick the last one for that streak, right? And that's going to be how we determine what uh like so we can filter the rest of this data out right so that we can just have the the final one here right and that and that really isn't going to be too hard here right so what we can do is we can put in a rank here right we can say select rank over and then we want to say same partition by here and then uh the order by in this case, so like we're partitioning on the streak identifier, and then the order by in this case is going to be streak length descending, right? So that uh, we can get the actual, um, just the final one here. And then we want this to be as rank. I'm gonna call this ranked. This will be in here. And we can get rid of this. And then we can say um, select star from ranked where rank equals one all right because that will give us only the top records now so okay so we have this going right and we have uh ranks oh we need to order by again though right so we're gonna say order by what is this streak length descending so we can kind of see this should Make it so that we have just one. Okay, yeah. See now, now this now it doesn't have all of his games from the beginning to the end. It just has his one here. So this is probably uh, sketchy, right? I I don't think that this guy won 182 times in a row. Especially like if you compare like everyone else in this data set, right? This guy, this is my regret regret guy, he seems to win a lot as well. That's a lot of Ws in a row. Um, and so this is definitely how you can go about like finding streaks and this is really exciting so that we can know how to like find these streaks and find what is the right way to do this stuff. So this is the main way to identify win and loss streaks. Hey, I hope you liked the video today. Window functions are pretty powerful, right? You can do all sorts of stuff with them and especially when you kind of nest the CTEs like that and build some really beautiful queries. So these queries will be available in a GitHub, uh, in link in the description. And uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment what you liked, what you didn't like, and uh, catch you next time, guys.